Wolverine's the best there is at what he does, but there are a lot of Wolverines now. You've got Logan, Laura, Gabrielle, and that's just the main three. After that, there are alternate timelines, parallel worlds, and years of history to consider. So which Wolverine is the best at what they do? Well, that's what we're here to find out. We're going over the top 10 strongest Wolverines. Let's get to it. Number 10. New Style Claws – Mangaverse Wolverine Many young nerds who like both Star Wars and Marvel have surely wondered what if Wolverine's claws were lightsabers. It's a silly fanboy type of question, however Marvel actually tried this idea out. Over in the X-Men Mangaverse continuity, we see a version of Logan who really can manifest energy claws. He can only do so with one hand, but it's still a cool effect. Manga Logan knows how to use them too, dueling the Shadowcat Ninja Clan with ease and grace. The fancy weaponry hasn't made him soft, however. He can take a blast of ice while wearing nothing but his underwear and shrug it off. He's actually the leader of his X-Men team, the one the others rally behind. He is a solid contender. The only thing holding him back is that his lightsaber claws just aren't exceptional enough. They're powerful, sure, he can rip a gigantic sentinel mech to pieces with them, leaving the pilot begging for mercy. But it's not a big enough boost to make him stand out a ton from other Wolverines. None of their claws are weak or full-on incapable of matching his energy blades. We can give him points for style, at least. His outfit is solid, and he later upgrades it to a pretty sweet Vegeta cosplay. You have to respect any Logan willing to pull that off. Unfortunately, decent attire can't make up for pretty much being just another Wolverine. The energy claws give him an edge over baseline Logan, but he's solidly at the bottom of this list. Now, before we get deeper into the video, if you enjoy what we do here at Blottomer Comics, be sure you hit the subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and smash that like button for your regular dose of plot armor. Our next contender is a wild one, so keep that tetanus shot handy. Number 9. Unlimited Savagery – Feral Wolverine When Wolverine snaps, nothing can stop him. One time, Wolverine was fighting Magneto. Eric was in a bad mood for a variety of reasons, and he chose to take that out on Logan in spectacular fashion. The Master of Magnetism ripped the adamantium away from Wolverine's bones on the molecular level, drawing it out through every pore on his body. Logan was barely alive after that attack. When he did recover, things got weird. Wolverine started to lose some of his capability for higher brain function. For a while, he was acting more like an animal than a person, prowling through the undergrowth after wayward children and howling up at the sky. Xavier eventually diagnosed the cause of this odd behavior as a secondary mutation. Without the adamantium on his skeleton, Logan was continuing to change, growing steadily more feral. His healing factor was only supposed to be part of his power set. With the intrusion on his skeleton gone, Logan would grow stronger even as his mind began to fade away. When this fully took hold, Wolverine was entirely transformed. His muscles bulged, his fingernails lengthened into additional claws, and his teeth grew into fangs. He's strong in this form and savage, taking down the powerful mutant Genesis like he was some random thug. This would-be heir of Apocalypse is torn apart, leaving only a smear of blood. The de-evolution continued with Wolverine growing stronger and more feral as time passed. He ends up barely sentient, acting more like the X-Men's trained pet than a person. Eventually, he was able to regain his mind to some extent thanks to Elektra pushing him to be more than an animal. Shortly after that encounter, Wolverine somehow lost these abilities off-panel, reverting back to his original appearance. He still has his bone claws, just no longer the super strength. This power-up didn't really last that long, less than a year in real time. Still, if you want a version of Logan with physical might to spare, look no further than the Feral Wolverine. Number 8. Harder Than Steel Albert. Who's Albert, you ask? Wolverine's Australian robot duplicate, of course. Albert was constructed in the Outback, specifically the fake town of Cooterman's Creek. He was created by Donald Pierce, a wealthy cyborg with a grudge against Logan. It was part of a plan to assassinate old James Howlett. The Wolverine duplicate would lure him in while his partner robot, Elsie D, would pretend to be in danger. Logan would save her, then Elsie would self-destruct. No one expects a small child to explode until it's too late. However, Elsie was smarter than Pierce predicted. She upgraded her partner robot's mind and body to try to give him a fighting chance against Wolverine. She's even the one who gave him the name Albert after Albert Einstein. Unfortunately, her efforts weren't enough. 
Albert wasn't the equal of Logan back then, going down pretty quickly during their fight. But his determination kept him going. He repaired himself and upgraded his hardware all to try and save his partner. Albert has kept improving himself over the years since then. He can shrug off bullets like they're nothing and faces heavily armed foes head on. An anti-tank round barely leaves a mark on him. He's even hardened his body against any kind of EMP pulse, making himself immune to regular anti-robot weapons. There's very little that can shake this guy. When forced to deal with him, his creator Donald Pierce felt compelled to bring along a railgun to even have a shot at taking Albert down. All this is before you get to his specific power set. Albert's designed like a robot ninja. He's got night vision, silent running, and even enough wireless capability to reach satellites. The last point is much more dangerous than it seems. Albert's been able to hack the National Security Agency's headquarters with low-grade consumer electronics. Given his skill at penetrating computer security, even a stealth bomber isn't safe from him. His greatest strength, however, is his sheer versatility. Albert has consistently shown himself able to adapt and improve over time, incorporating new technology into himself. Even if you beat him, he'll learn, improve, and get better for the next fight. And stay tuned because Albert isn't even the toughest robot on this list. Number 7. Bringer of Peace, Brother Xavier This Wolverine was strong enough to unite the world against him. Apocalypse attempted to make Logan one of his four horsemen of the apocalypse. This went far too well. Wolverine killed the big guy and kept on going after that, wiping out his world's supervillain population. Once he got through them, he went after corrupt politicians and businessmen. It reached a point where all the nations of the world united to try to bring down this bloodthirsty monster, which is exactly what Wolverine wanted. Fear of him would keep people in line better than further bloodshed. Once the world was on a better path, the Horsemen of War quietly retired. He became a monk, taking the name Brother Xavier and lived out in the countryside. He offers advice to those who have struggled with their role in the world like he once did. Brother Xavier isn't his old bloodthirsty self. It's important that he stays under the radar to preserve world peace. Even now, there are gangs stirring up trouble in the name of war. However, he'll fight if he has to. And when the time comes to beat some fools down, he'll do what needs to be done. He's lost virtually none of his old strength. He's even got greater power than the main timeline Wolverine thanks to the horseman's enhancements Apocalypse used to turn him into war. Every horseman is significantly stronger than their baseline self, and he's no different. Still, as sad as it is to say, this Logan's pacifism does cost him some points in our analysis. We have an example of holding him back in battle. He's reluctant to draw his claws and gets him cut open by an ice pick. Even with a healing factor, that kind of hesitation would prove disastrous in a more serious fight. This Wolverine's no longer the ruthless monster who slaughtered half the world in service to Apocalypse. He's become a better person, but he's weaker than his old self. Still, Wolverine Apocalypse? Eh, put a pin in that, we'll get back to it. Number 6. End of Days – Omega Wolverine The True Cyborg Wolverine Omega Wolverine is the ultimate cybernetic predator and may be a straight-up reference to the classic sci-fi film franchise Terminator. He's from a distant future where humanity has ascended to join an AI consciousness known as the Phalanx. Only in this timeline, the Phalanx were co-opted by Moira McTaggart into a tool of mutant destruction. Wolverine's been infected by it. There's a nanobot plague within his body constantly trying to spread itself across the world and assimilate everyone it can. It's infected his adamantium skeleton at its root layer. Even with his healing factor suppressed, the robot drones can more than compensate for any damages. Omega Wolverine is the only character on this list who has fought every mainline Marvel Wolverine. He faced Gabi, Laura, and Dokken in a three-on-one melee. These are all strong combatants, and every hit they landed on the Omega did nothing. The Omega Wolverine eventually squared off with Logan one-on-one, -on -one, rendered down to nothing but bones. And even then, the Omega was unstoppable. All Wolverine could do was try to defend himself. None of his attacks managed to damage his time-displaced doppelganger. The real danger of the Omega Wolverine, however, is something much subtler than brute strength. Infection. We've seen the Phalanx is capable of transmission and adaptation. That's how Logan got infected with it in the first place. The virus doesn't need any pre-existing mechanical parts to take control of you. One cut from those glowing claws and the Phalanx spreads. And you thought fighting a regular Wolverine was bad? Yeah, try one that can effectively kill you with just a scratch. The X-Men were only able to destroy Omega Wolverine thanks to a ridiculously precise set of circumstances. 
They had just retrieved a unique high-tech sword that Sage was able to repurpose into an anti-phalanx weapon. The bigger issue, though, is the Omega's internal conflict. The Phalanx and Wolverine are perpetually at odds and both hold each other back. As tough as the Omega is, it can never fully commit to the fight. It's still strong as hell, but these next five Wolverines are even stronger. Number 5. Apocalypse Come Again Weapon Omega Brother Xavier saved the world, this Wolverine almost destroyed it. Meet Weapon Omega, also known as the Heir of Apocalypse. He did not share the last entrance moral scruples when given that unlimited power. He was every bit the tyrannical, ruthless enemy of humanity that people believed Wolverine to be. Weapon Omega originates quite some time in the future, after the initial events of Age of Apocalypse. Magneto had already destroyed the original tyrant, the world was at peace, and things were progressing pretty well. There was even some degree of peace between humans and mutants. Unfortunately, things didn't stay so rosy. The Celestials, a race of space gods, showed up to appoint a new apocalypse. They were really into the whole developed superior species thing. Weapon X and his team tried to take them out, but it backfired hard. In that ship, Logan ultimately gave in to the godly beings and promised to act as their representative on Earth. He was fused with a potent Death Seed, becoming the new Apocalypse. Though he never used that title, he'd pick up right where the original left off, purging the Earth of humans entirely to make way for mutant kind as the sole remaining species. Weapon Omega is off the charts in terms of strength. If we were going purely on potential power, he'd top this list. That celestial technology rebuilt him into a weapon of war. Doctor Doom estimates his power as being on par with that of the Phoenix, and Victor may be underselling that. We've seen this guy shrug off a blast from Phoenix Force, Jean Grey, and then Incapacitator. He can take down this planet destroying superpower like she's nothing. Later on, he goes up against Rogue and Magneto, two legendary and powerful mutants. Logan doesn't mess around. He defeats the pair in a matter of seconds. He kills them both, quick, clean, and decisive. Nothing phases this man. The humans tried to nuke him when he invaded their last city, but that didn't work. Omega is able to engage a combined attack of X-Force and AOA resistance elements, including Sabretooth, Nightcrawler, Deadpool, Psylocke, and the main timeline Wolverine. Not one of them can land a scratch on him. Omega demolishes each like they're moving in slow motion. This guy is going about leveling cities as though it was nothing. His healing factor is almost irrelevant at this point. However, he has a key weakness that the other Wolverines lack, the Life Seed. This is another bit of celestial technology that can counteract the effects of the Death Seed, destroying Weapon Omega instantly. It's hard to find one and even harder to make him bond with it, but it's feasible. Weapon Omega was ultimately destroyed by Jean Grey, slipping it into his mouth while kissing him. Any Wolverine who can be taken out without so much as a punch has to lose some points on the power scale. Plus, Omega's attitude holds him back from the heights of this list. He rarely uses the full extent of his power, sitting back and letting his minions do most of the work. He's arrogant, and that makes him overconfident. When he does engage, it's always with the minimal force required. Most of the time, that's enough, but this puts him on the back foot in any contest he'd have to get serious about. Phantom X used it to incapacitate him with a well-placed illusion, taking the tyrant out of the fight to let X-Force win the day. Ironically, Weapon Omega is limited in the same way as Brother Xavier. Strength you don't bother to use is not real strength. Number 4. Bane of Demons – Weapon Hex how could the Weapon X program get any worse? Well, just add black magic. Weapon Hex was born out of a cult known as the Evolutionaries, who are trying to bring back the dark god Mephicthon into the world. Every attempt they made at creating a vessel for their lord's essence to inhabit failed, and failed miserably. They tried to take a new approach for their last attempt, Hex 23. She was the naturally born daughter of the project's scientific lead, with just a touch of mutant growth hormone and dark magic thrown in for good measure. The child, Laura Kenny, has been a proficient combatant since the age of five and trained extensively in hand-to-hand -hand fighting with Ileana Rasputin, one of the most magically powerful mutants around. It certainly paid off. Weapon Hex has consistently proven herself a highly lethal warrior, even against foes with similar levels of magical power. Elsa Bladestone, the fusion of two legendary monster hunters, couldn't take down Laura. Her real potential, however, comes outside of physical combat. She has one of the most unique set of skills of any Wolverine thanks to her background. The magical nature of her origin isn't just an excuse for her to fight demons or have energy claws. She's a fully proficient spellcaster. 
She can warp her foes away with Hexagon, drain their power with Hexpulsion, or incinerate them with Hex Termination. She's even picked up some non-combat spells that are useful in a fight, like Hex Selection, which lets her investigate a target's past. That's not to discount her basic combat abilities. She's got one of the strongest healing factors of any Wolverine. With magic boosting her innate regeneration, Laura can get burned to a pile of ashes in return in a matter of seconds. Even severed limbs just need to be reattached. She also has a Berserker Rage Mode triggered by the spell Hex Marks the Spot, in which her physical strength is greatly increased. The true upper limits of her power, however, come from magic. Weapon Hex is able to summon an entire zombie army if she needs to, an ability she used to annihilate the cult that created her. She can nullify enemy powers, placing any foe in her reach. Hex has even one attack spell, her Hex Ray, which is powerful enough to reduce its target to nothing but a charred skeleton. She's strong enough to take out a legendary magic user like it's nothing. I guess it's true what they say. Don't mess with a Hexus. Number 3. The Hero of Myth, Governor General Howlett you want a five-star badass of a Wolverine who can clash with the biggest threats out there? Then, my friends, you go to none other than the General. James Hallett was the governor of Canada in his lifetime. He was one of the world's greatest heroes seeking out Shangri-La before teaming up with his one true love, Hercules. The two spent years fighting monsters and dragons together before they were cast down into Tartarus by a jealous Zeus. They spent three or four years in the demon realm slaughtering their way through the horrors of the underworld before escaping into the wider multiverse. Governor Howlett is known for his multiverse-spanning adventures as part of an X-Men team that was hunting the evil Charles Xavier. Howlett got the first kill of his team, taking out a tentacle-heavy Xavier in record time. He's got all the standard Wolverine attributes, strength, healing factor and an indestructible skeleton. His secret weapon, however, is that his claws aren't bound in adamantium. They're bound in adamantine, a gift from Hercules. This golden metal is inherently divine and has given General Howlett strength beyond his prime universe counterpart. This is the same material used by Kronos to cut Uranus, the first being in classical Greek mythology, and it's the basis of Hercules' golden mace. His claws are a weapon equivalent to Thor's hammer Mjolnir in the amount of magical power they contain. Given Thor's hammer can tear a hole in celestial armor, one of the toughest defenses in the Marvel Universe, Howlett can rip his way through whatever he needs to. He can even parry non-physical attacks, deflecting an optic blast without much effort. Given that these claws are mystical in nature, that also means the governor could theoretically cut Superman, a feat regular Wolverine would not be able to match. Only Weapon Hex can compete with James in this area, and while she has a wider variety of spells, the sheer power in his unique claws gives the governor general a clear advantage in strength. It also gives Howlett a unique immunity. Unlike most Wolverines, he's specifically immune to mental attacks thanks to the magical metal coating on his skull. He's proven himself consistently able to avoid Xavier's mental probing, a useful skill for a telepath hunter. There's nothing he can't cut. He's resistant to magical and mental attacks and has the regular Wolverine healing factor to round it all off. After his love died, Governor Howlett mused about storming Hades to get him back. Given this man's strength and determination, if I were the god of the dead, I'd start running. Number 2. Hulk slash Wolverine Hybrid Weapon H Did you know Wolverine started out as a Hulk villain? The Canadian government said old Knuckle had to fight the Jolly Green Giant when he first came north of the border. These two go way back and were able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe right from Wolverine's introduction. It only makes sense that somewhere down the line we'd get a combination. Still, you have to question the scientist who thought sticking Wolverine and Hulk together would be a good idea. Even the concept sounds ridiculously dangerous, but when you hear about the science behind it, it somehow gets worse. Dr. Alba, the lead scientist on the project, deliberately chose to use an unwilling subject for the procedure. Her reasoning was morally bankrupt, but logically sound. Their experiments had been using frantically loyal subjects so far, volunteers brought on by Reverend Stryker, and they failed. Alba wanted someone unwilling to take on the power, ruled by resentment and anger. She suspected that that was the key to unlocking the full power of the Hulk and brought up Wolverine as another example of someone like that. To no surprise, she ended up getting a bit creative with H-Alpha. And her work does not disappoint. 
Weapon H enters the fray with fine style, taking out the inferior Hulk Wolverine hybrid effortlessly. Unfortunately for Dr. Alba, her failsafe control mechanism failed immediately. H turned right around and started annihilating the Weapon X facility that created him. Even the regular Hulk couldn't get more than one blow in before being knocked away. While Weapon H was designed to draw upon powerful emotions, Dr. Alba thought her subject Clayton Cortez would be able to control these potent feelings. The anger would be there, but channeled and directed. It took some time, but Clayton ultimately proved her right. This man has managed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bruce Banner, the original Hulk. When Logan showed up, it was every bit as much of a slugfest, and that was before H used his full Hulk form. The ultimate test for Mr. Cortez, however, came later. He was forced to fight regular Wolverine infected with gamma radiation, and regular Hulk with animantium grafted to his skeleton. That's right. It's Hulkverine versus Hulkverine versus Hulkverine! It's a triple threat of terror and mayhem, battling it out for the heavyweight title belt, coming to you live this Sunday from Technodro. <clears throat> anyway, yeah. Banner and Logan were both going all out after getting transformed, brawling with rage-driven super strength. They were knocking each other senseless and at a risk of getting each other killed. Weapon H went in to fight them solo to try to bring them under control. Given the downright impossible task here, Cortez gave a good account of himself scrapping with two highly powered heroes as an equal. This man has taken some blows, but he's never lost a fight. Clayton retired from the superhero life, wanting to protect his wife and two adorable kids. That's understandable. He's never asked for his powers after all. He's a tough as nails combatant, but he's not indestructible, unlike our final entry. Number 1. Strength of Many the Muramasa Wolverine. Back in the day, Wolverine asked the legendary smith Sengol Muramasa to forge a blade for him. He was beyond angry. The Winter Soldier had killed the woman he loved. Logan was lost in a red haze of bloodlust and desperate for vengeance on the murderous Russian agent. Muramasa took those feelings along with a tiny portion of Logan's soul and forged a blade for him. The smith never named it. To Wolverine and most others, it's simply known as the Muramasa Sword. This nameless blade is one of the strongest tools out there when it comes to taking on Wolverine. After all, it's powered by Logan's own anger and self-loathing. It can cut through anything, severing bonds on the molecular level. Logan himself has said it's the only weapon that could permanently kill him. His son Dokken tried to use it against his father during his vengeance quest. Later on, the group known as the Orphans of X melted it down and began using the Muramasa bullets to execute Logan's friends and family. Each one caused a permanent death, shutting down the target's healing factor. There is no Wolverine in the multiverse who is immune to this ultimate weapon, save for one. Laura Kinney, the second Wolverine, needed to find a way to deal with the Orphans of X, you know, since they were killing everyone associated with Logan. So she, Dokken, and Scout headed out to find Muramasa. The old smith was still around and had mellowed out over the years. He had a shield, bearing a little more of Logan's soul that he had forged to accompany the blade. But one shield isn't really enough to stop a hail of magic bullets, so Muramasa returned to the forge. Taking a piece from three souls this time, the ancient smith forged something even greater than the sword. He created the Muramasa Armor for Laura. This protective gear is light and strong, a masterwork from the ancient smith. It can turn bullets aside, but it doesn't slow the wearer down one bit. Laura has proven able to go really to town in it, wading into a whole army of orphan operatives without getting so much as a scratch. However, its abilities go beyond that. The Muramasa Blade, this ridiculously potent weapon, was so strong because it held a piece of Logan's soul. That's what gave it the power to cut through anything. The armor and shield, when combined, hold four such soul pieces. When she dons the plate and carries the shield, Laura has four times the strength of what had been Wolverine's ultimate weapon. That's an exponential step up from anything else on this list. The Muramasa armor lets Laura fight with the power of her entire family backing her up. The potency of this suit is enormous. It should be a magical equivalent to Tony Stark's Hulkbuster. As such, this is, for the moment, the strongest Wolverine out there. So what do you think? Is there a tougher Wolverine than Muramasa armored Laura? Are you just angry that we didn't put Darkclaw on this list? Do you think members of the Wolverine's team book should be considered Wolverines? Let us know in the comments below. On behalf of Plot Armor Comics, thank you so much for watching. I've been Morse Code, and we hope you have an awesome day.